morning everybody welcome back to my channel or if you are new here welcome it is friday march 18th and i'm going to be making some cinnamon buns today i what i do is i bake a recipe for dough in my bread maker and then i roll it out and put the filling on um i do have carpal tunnel syndrome in both my wrists and so i've been having a difficult time using my wooden rolling pin so just the other day I ordered this marble rolling pin off of Amazon for myself, um, thinking that the weight of it will help me a lot when I'm rolling it out because I find that when I'm rolling pie crusts out, my wooden rolling pin is just fine because you're just rolling out. My pie crust batch makes six, uh, six crusts, so you can divide that into six portions. So you're rolling out a very, very small piece of pastry because you're only, you know, you're making one, one pie crust at a time. But for cinnamon buns, you're having to roll out the entire ball of dough at once and I always find it quite difficult so I got a rolling, marble rolling pin thinking that the weight of it will help me so I'm going to give that a try today just let me have one second here I'm just going to close the door on these other birds because they're quite funny that means that won't completely silence them but it will hopefully muffle them a little bit because they're in full voice this morning so what I have here is this is a cookbook what my bread maker is a black and decker all-in-one plus horizontal bread maker i've had it for a number of years this cookbook is actually from a sunbeam bread maker that i had previously but i'm going to use the basic sweet dough recipe i'm not sure if you can see that or not i'm going to use the large batch and actually i think i may have already filmed myself doing cinnamon buns at one time on here but it's buried in the middle of a vlog like a very lengthy vlog so i'm just going to recap i'm going to do it again uh, just because it's this will be pretty much just a cooking video. So I'm going to start with one cup of water and grab my measuring cup. And it needs to be kind of lukewarm. You don't want hot water, but you also don't want it cold. So I'm going to warm it up a bit. I don't know if you can see as I have dirty dishes in the sink back here. Please disregard. Um, today is the first day that I've had off and off of both jobs in quite some time. Um, as you know, I work at a school lunch program part-time, but I also work at a Canadian grocery store chain as a cashier. And today is an in-service day at the school, so there's no school. And it's a scheduled day off from Sobeys, where I work. So, I actually have a day off both jobs. Lately, I've been doing some weekends at Sobeys, so that means that then that if I'm working most of the weekdays at the lunch program, even though it's only for like an hour and a half, that means I'm there most weekdays and working weekends. So I'm, I'm working basically six days out of seven right now. Even though both jobs are part-time, still it's, my days are not my own. Quite often the shifts at Sobeys are anywhere from five to five and a half hours. And if it's a day that I'm doing the school first for an hour and a half, I'm pretty much putting in a full day. So anyway, as I said, this is lukewarm water. You don't want it hot but you also don't want it cold either. So I start with the water. But yeah, this is actually a day I have off both jobs, so I get to bake or do whatever. Well, not whatever I want. I mean, I've got the dishwasher to unload and dirty dishes to reload in the dishwasher. There's all, there's, it's never a complete day off, but. Uh, two large eggs, I forgot to get the eggs out. well stocked which is a good thing but it means I have to dig to dig things that get out of there that I need. Now with any luck hopefully I won't lose any shell in here. There we go. I am excited to try this marble rolling pin because I'm curious if the weight of it will help because with having carpal tunnel I'm having such a hard time using my wooden rolling pin really aggravates my wrists. It's some kind of that numb, tingly feeling in them and stuff. So I'm hoping that the weight of the marble rolling pin will be a help. So I'm curious to see how it goes today. All right, so two eggs. And then we need quarter cup butter or margarine. I'm just using margarine. Let me get my quarter cup here. I could probably use my liquid measuring cup, but it doesn't matter. Um, 
no issues using a dry measuring cup for this either. Doesn't hurt anything. And you could use real butter. I quite often will use margarine in this, especially because when I'm doing the filling, you have to smear margarine or margarine or butter all over the dough once it's laid out. And it's quite a bit. So to use that much butter, I mean, it would probably taste really good to use real butter, but it's a lot of butter to smear all over that filling. I don't really measure how much I put on. I just use a spatula and smear it all over till it's well covered and then put my cinnamon and sugar mix on top. So we've got a quarter cup of margarine here. It's not all of it. I'm going to try and get it off the spoon and out of the cup. Alright. I know technically I could take my day off today and just simply have a day off and not bake or not cook or whatever, but that's not like me. My days off are never my days off. I always, that's kills or catch up days. Um, well, I work as a cashier at the grocery store and usually I'm working afternoons or evenings. Although the other day I did have a 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. shift, which is odd for me. Um, I work at the school whatever days I'm not at Sylvie's or if it works around my Sylvie's schedule, Sylvie's comes first. So yeah, and then if now I've started volunteering at a homeless shelter uh, this past month, so one or two evenings a week. So whatever evenings I'm not working, I'm there. Or at the church, because I also have Bible study and prayer meeting at church too. Anyway, back to this, four cups of flour. So I don't have that on camera because it is a big, big bag of flour. I will bring it over now. It's like a 10 kilogram, 22 pound bag of flour basically, so. <sighs> So what do we got going here? I'm going to measure out four cups. And my problem, if I have to measure out anything more than about two cups of flour, is my problem is sometimes my mind wanders and then I forget, did I put in two cups or did I put in three cups? And then I panic because I'm going to lose count. But I'm talking to you guys, so hopefully this is one. Hopefully I'll be able to keep on track mentally here. And two, three, and one more. When I go silent when I'm doing this, and I'm not filming, I'm just doing it on my own, my mind wanders, and I'm like, oh, did I put two or three, and right away my mind will wander, and I'm like, uh-oh, now what did I do? But this is four. So, that is four cups of all-purpose flour. Done. And now, two teaspoons of salt. All right, so I need Teaspoon, yes, it is two teaspoons of salt. I don't want them to be heaping teaspoons, I just want them to be basic, regular teaspoon. That's good. Two teaspoons, half a cup of sugar. So that is granulated sugar, not icing sugar or confectioner sugar as it would be called, just granulated. So where's my half cup? Right there. I need to go get some sugar. to making the filling, I'm going to be using brown sugar for that. Either golden yellow sugar or brown sugar. So that's a half cup sugar, three tablespoons of skim milk powder, three tablespoons of skim milk powder, tablespoon of yeast. If the recipe book actually says quick rise yeast, 
I didn't realize that. I never really took a chance of, I've only ever just used bread machine yeast on this because I'm using a bread machine. But I did actually buy quick fries yeast the other day because I saw another YouTuber who posted a video on making white dinner rolls and that calls for quick fries yeast. So I suppose I could just switch and do this, but I have like, this is bread machine yeast and I have another couple jars of it, so I might as well use it up. And I've always had good success using that, so that's totally fine, I'll just use that. Although, once I'm done using these jars up, I could probably switch to quick rise yeast and just see how it goes, since that's what it says. Okay, so there's my yeast. I gotta clean this kitchen up after. Ah, so how come cleaning up is never as fun as the actual cooking? Okay, so we're close our lid. And let's see, I don't know how much you can see. I think that's pretty good. I think you can see pretty well. So I'm going to go through my menu. This is basic, which would be like white bread, rapid if I was making like a quick loaf of bread, sweet bread, sweet. Well, that would actually probably be like this. It'd be like sweet bread. But what I want is the dough cycle. And this is like for the next one is a grain bread and a French. See, I would have to dig out my recipe book that came with this bread maker and see what the recipes are for all these different things. This also has a cake cycle, a bake cycle, a jam cycle. Now I make a lot of jam, but I make cooked jam and I make it from scratch on my stovetop. So I don't know how that would go here. And then the very, the next one is the dough cycle, which is what I want. And then the bottom one is desserts. So I'm on the dough cycle right now. I'm gonna push start. And I think you can see that the red light lit up. So that is going to be a two hour cycle. I think you can see two hours on the display. So yes, it's going to be preheating now. Um, it's only a dough cycle, but still it, it preheats, it warms up, and about 20 or so minutes in, then it will start to uh, knead the dough and mix all the ingredients together. So, yeah, now you have a really good look at the fact that my kitchen needs tidying. It's not desperate, but there's, I gotta put my flour bag back, there's a empty container from the rotisserie chicken we had for supper yesterday. Quick supper, because I was volunteering at the mission last night for the second night in a row this week, so I gotta... Rinse these guys out and put them in the recycle bin. Um, anyway, that's as far as I'll go with this for right now. I will come back maybe once this starts kneading and show you how it's doing. And definitely once the dough is done, I will show you maybe not the entirety of me rolling the dough out, but I'll try and show you at least a little bit of it so you can see how it's going. Partly because I don't want to show you the entirety of me rolling the dough out just because it takes a bit of time and you might get bored if I have you watch the whole thing. But also because I do it in the next room, which is... The room we, it, it's a, it's a bedroom, but because we don't have a dining room, we turned that one into a dining room originally, and then now it has been taken over because it's not a dining room anymore. Now we have a second deep freeze in there, and a couple of our bird cages are in there. So, um, my table is very, very old, and it used to be a table we would sit at and eat at, but now it just houses a couple of the bird cages. So I'm going to have to take those guys off of there and move them out of the room, and, um, wipe that table down make it nice and clear nice and clean and stuff to roll the dough out because that's the only really good size surface I have to do that on so I'll show you some of the rolling out the dough when the time comes so I'm not going to show you the entire thing because um, my African Grey Parrot and my Quaker Parrot live in that room and they're going to be squawking and talking while I'm in there I'm sure you guys don't want to listen to that so I will check back with you guys in a little bit hope you've enjoyed it so far and I'll check back with you guys in a little while Okay, there's one other thing I wanted to show you guys, and this is completely unrelated to cinnamon buns. However, if you saw in my grocery haul that I posted yesterday, I bought four packages of pork chops. And I mentioned that one of the things I like to do for cooking them, I cook them in the oven basically, but one of the things I like to do is I use different craft salad dressings that sometimes, the like more creamier ones like ranch, they don't work well as marinades, but some of these more like oil ones, they work well as a... Well, they used to say dressing slash marinade on the bottom. Now they just say dressing, but they do work well as marinades. So what I did was I put them in marinade to cook in the oven today. And if you want to check out my friend uh, channel Leroy over at 40 and Broke, he commented on my grocery haul yesterday and said, you should do a video showing the what you do with the pork chops. Well, they're not really much to show. I mean, other because I'm put, I baked them in the oven, but what I could have done is shown you put me be putting them in the marinade, I guess, but... I'll show you what I did. They've been marinating since yesterday. I think you can see. Let me check my camera angle here. Yeah, you can see them pretty good. That one is, this one is, it smells really good. This is in the sun-dried tomato and oregano. 
It smells very good. There's five of them in this dish. That's why I have a second dish because <laughs> they're big enough pork chops that they didn't fit all six in here. There were six in a tray. So that was actually a pretty good price yesterday. If there was like five to six in each tray, that's not bad. So then this one I put by itself. Make sure this is going over the top of it and really soaking in. This lid is a little bit trickier. This one mm -hmm. is on its own, but it is uh, in the uh, Greek feta and oregano dressing. So I'm going to be cooking these up later in the oven. I'll probably... I have some mushrooms in the fridge. Maybe I could cook some of those or something too. I don't know. My daughter does not like mushrooms. She also doesn't like pork chops. So this will not be a meal for her. She'll probably wind up making some of her noodles or something. Or we can, or she can throw some hot dogs on to cook. Or we also have frozen pizzas that were on sale at my work a little while back downstairs too. So I'll probably make mashed potatoes. When I bake these in the oven, I'll make some mashed potatoes. I'll probably either cook up some corn or else maybe do some cook up some mushrooms to go along with. Mushrooms would probably be good. But don't know what I would really do with them. I'd probably have to fry those. But so we'll see. We'll see how the day goes. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what all else I'm going to bake. <laughs> so we'll see how, how the day goes. It's a day off. I can go at my own pace. We'll see how much trouble I get into and how much of a mess I make. But following Leroy's suggestion of showing what I do with the pork chops, I, I know it's not going to be a video on its own of cooking pork chops because once they're in the marinade, they're just sitting here for 24 hours in the fridge and then pop them in the oven. But I will show you how they turn out later. I will definitely show you how they turned out and because uh, they smell really really good both the greek fed and oregano and the sun-dried tomato and oregano are ones that are are good their favorites but i also like to use the zesty italian those three are the primary ones that i use for marinade um there's a couple other ones too like there's some oil and vinaigrette ones um but these craft salad dressings a lot of them double as marinades like i said not the creamy cucumber or the ranch those kind or like even the French, those or Thousand Island, those guys are just not conducive to it. But but these ones here, they're more liquidy, they're a little more runny, and they they smell wonderful. I mean, they're still good as a salad dressing too, but they're very very good just as a marinade for either. I do this with chicken breasts or pork chops, so you can't go wrong. I mean, they're and then I just bake them, you know, on a cookie sheet lined with tin foil in the oven at 350 degrees for about. 30 minutes or so depending on the thickness um some of the pork chops i bought in the past they don't have bones in them so they don't take very long half an hour is more than enough you just kind of have to check in on them once in a while and eyeball them and see if they're starting to brown at the edges or what have you these ones might take a little bit more than 30 minutes because first of all there's well there's six but mind you when i got the ones that didn't have bone in there was usually like eight or nine in the package but there's they're smaller and no bone whereas these ones are a larger pork chop than the ones I usually got and they have bone in. So 350, probably minimum 30 minutes and then check them and then see if they need to go to 45 minutes or whatever. And I'll serve them. You can make rice on the stove top or in this case, I'm just feeling like maybe mashed potatoes will be good. And I could put some sugar snap peas like, like raw vegetables on the side or cook up some peas or corn or fry up some mushrooms. You know, it just, it's whatever you're feeling basically. It's a very simple meal. This is one, one hour, 43 minutes left on my bread maker timer, so I can hear it kind of ticking away in there every so often. So pretty much sometime in the next five, 10 minutes, it'll start kneading. That's, uh, that's where we're at. So I guess I probably should unload and reload the dishwasher. Get some work done around here. I'll check in with you guys in a little while. Okay, the bread maker is starting to knead the dough. You can see, I think you can see under there, that we got about an hour and 23 minutes left on this cycle. Let me see if I can turn a light on under the counter to show you better. There you go. Hour and 23 minutes left of the two hour cycle. So, I probably can't see too much in there. I'll open the lid and let you have a quick peek. I don't want to have it up for too long though because you'll let the heat out. But that's what it's starting to look like. Better let it close, otherwise any heat that's in there because it preheated a little bit will escape. So, I've changed my clothes and now I'm gonna go do 30 minutes or 20 minutes or so, give or take, on my treadmill for a little while. I've just started a little laundry and I'm gonna go use my treadmill for a bit since this is gonna take another hour and a half anyway. I still haven't cleaned my kitchen, but that's okay. And then this afternoon, once I'm done working out, I'll have to uh, have a shower so I can drive my daughter to work at 
can't remember if she works 5 to 9 or 2.30 tonight today, but I'll have to give her a ride a little bit later. So that's what it's doing. It's kneading. And then because there's some heat in there, it'll rise and stuff and do its thing. So I've got another little less than an hour and a half to go. So I'm going to go work out on my treadmill for a bit. And yeah, I'm going to check back with you guys later. Okay, so it is now 12.03 in the afternoon. I started a load of laundry. Small load, it's just delicates. Some blouses, my work shirt, a few things like that. So it's eight minutes till that finishes. And I just finished um, 30 minutes on my treadmill as well. Not sure if you can see if the display still shows. 1.6 miles. 30 minutes, 30 seconds. Not too bad. So I managed to get a little, little bit done. The cinnamon bun dough is still going. It's probably got, oh, maybe 45 minutes left on the cycle, I would guess. So that's what I'm up to. I guess I'll probably turn you around here. Okay, so yeah, that's, uh, I don't, I don't want to look great right now because I just worked out, but at least uh, getting something done. So I'm going to go grab a shower because I think I probably have a little time left on the cinnamon bun dough cycle here. So I'll probably have time to... I did watch some 90 Day Fiance while I was on the treadmill, so now I'll either watch a little bit more of that and then have my shower, or probably if I just want to keep going with my day and keep pushing through, I probably should just go start the shower and get that done so that I'm done when the, when the dough comes out of the bread maker, but one or the other, I'll decide. Right now I just, just stepped off the treadmill, so I just need a few minutes to <laughs> have a drink of water and relax for a minute, so check back, in, check back with you guys again shortly. So, I'm back. I've got my ball of cinnamon bun dough. I had to evict most of the birds from the room because I needed to clean off this table to use it. And also because Pepe, the Quaker parrot, he was screaming at me while I was cleaning the table. The only one left in here, which is behind where my phone is filming, is Ruby, my African Grey. So she may squawk a little bit, but hopefully she won't be too bad. We'll see how this goes. So, this is my first time using this marble rolling pin, so hopefully it'll be okay. I'm going to get started here. I've been told I should flower it a little bit, so we'll see. I'm hoping I'm also not pushing real firmly yet. i got an air pocket right there. Let's push that out. Okay. Let's see, I don't, I haven't, this is my first time using this, so I haven't yet got a good gauge on how much force to use or how much force it needs. It shouldn't need as much as the wooden rolling pin because it is so much heavier. So far, eh, I'm making some progress. It is going a little quicker, a little easier than the wooden rolling pin. Don't mind the high pitched shrieks, that's just Ruby behind you there, or behind the camera. She's in her cage, she can see me. She probably wants me to let her out, but I'm not letting her out while I'm doing this. She's gonna have to wait. Okay, I may pause the video at some point just to focus just strictly on this and bring you back once I'm done. So far, so good though. This is definitely going easier than the wind rolling pin. So because of that, I will be much more inclined to make some wind buns much more often if this is actually making my job easier and my life easier. And so far it is. Although it is still taking a little, little elbow grease, but that's okay. The weight of this is definitely helping. I'm just not a fan. I wish I had enough counter space in the kitchen to do it on the counter, because it's hard on my lower back bending to this height. But my kitchen is a spacious enough room, but the counter space is not plentiful. There's a lot of counter space going that way, like lengthwise, but it's not deep. It's okay for rolling pie crusts out on, but not a dough this size. Okay. Alright, I'm going to pause you guys and I'll bring you back in a bit. Okay, so I've got this pretty well rolled out. Pretty good. The weight has definitely made this a lot easier. Please ignore Ruby's high-pitched shrieks in the background. It's really hard to do because she's right there. But Ruby, it's okay. She wants out of her cage. I can't really let her out at the moment. 
don't want her in the middle of all this. So this is pretty good. I'm trying to get, definitely getting it started is still a little bit of work, but the weight of this makes a big difference. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is take my margarine and a spatula. I'm going to coat this with margarine. Liberally coat this, and then I'll cover it with my filling, which is, you can either use gold and yellow sugar, which is what I use, or brown sugar. I used a cup, and then three teaspoons of cinnamon, which is the equivalent of a tablespoon. And some people like to have raisins on their cinnamon buns, in their cinnamon buns, some don't. I usually do put them in. So, make sure this is covered close to the edges too, you know, make sure it's well covered. And then I'll pause you after this, once I roll it up, and I'll go grease some pans. It is 128 right now, so by the time I get some pans greased and this sliced and into the pans to rise, I'll have to take my daughter to work at two o'clock. She starts at 2.30 today. So it won't take me that long to do this. I won't give me enough time to shower. I know I talked about showering after you're using the treadmill. Didn't get around to it. As you can see, I'm still in the same t-shirt. But that's okay. I've made a humongous mess in my kitchen that will need to be cleaned up too. Probably won't bake too much else today, but I will have to peel potatoes later to have with those pork chops and stuff. And I've got that load of delicate drying in the dryer right now. They dry for like a very short time, like 15, 20 minutes on low. And then usually if it's something that I'm concerned with shrink, I'll take them out and hang them in the bathroom in the shower finish drying, so just so that there's no risk of them shrinking. Okay, this is pretty good for, for the margarine. Now we'll get our filling in there. Show you what it looks like once I'm done with that. So let's cover this as much as I can. I, I'm pretty liberal with the cinnamon. I do three teaspoons, which is the equivalent of a tablespoon, but if those teaspoons happen to be a little bit on the heaping side, I don't level them off, because to me, whether it's cinnamon buns or apple pie, you just cannot have too much cinnamon. I don't think. I have one friend, I have one friend who really, really has a distaste for anything with cinnamon in it, but I don't understand them. I can't understand that apple pie and cinnamon buns are very good things. There is also a variation of this recipe where you can make like a, a peanut butter type filling. I made it once, not a huge fan of it. Ruby. I feel like I almost need to let her out of the quiche, but where the camera is set up, I can't even really get to her quiche right now without pausing you guys. So I'm hoping she'll just hang in there. Ruby, you're okay. I'll let you out in a bit. She is in full voice today, so. Actually, this isn't even that bad. She just, she can see me, and she's very much my bird, and she wants out of that cage so bad. But I don't want her in the middle of this. But I don't want to turn her loose in the other room either, because she will get into stuff. She'll get on the floor and eat baseboards, or she'll approach one of the other bird's cages and try and attack their toes or something through the bars. And so it's just, she's like a toddler. I can't leave her unsupervised, right? So, and she doesn't really care for any of the other birds. So she would probably go after them. So, okay, this is almost all on here. And I'm not gonna measure out how much I need for raisins, I'll just eyeball it. I'm not gonna like completely cover it with raisins so you can't see any dough or anything. Hey, that's stop. enough. Yeah. Okay, that voice that said stop, that manly sounding voice, that's Ruby. Her previous owners, they have a couple, and I guess, she, I guess she's mimicking the husband's voice because every once in a while she'll start bellering like that. And then in a man's voice, she'll say, stop, like she just did. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they could only see you hanging on the bars of the cage behind the camera, dancing back and forth, because you want out so bad, you're deafening everybody on my video. You know that, right? You're cute, but you're noisy. Yeah, yeah, you're cute. You're very cute. Okay. But you're too noisy. Okay. Shh. I can't let you out right now. I can't even get to you. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna have to try and reach her because she's just being a little obnoxious. Okay. Hold on. Let's see if I can reach your cage here. You're being difficult right now. You're being a noisy bird. I'll 
put you on my shoulder. If I can't have you on the table, come on. Yeah, you big suck. This is the noisemaker right here. No, you're not going on the table. You can come. I just wanted to show you to everybody. You on my shoulder. You are so, you're so spoiled too. You just got out of the cage. This is the only way to settle her down. She's very much a mama's bird. So I still need these. She's distracting me with all her noise. I'm trying to worry about how loud she is for you guys watching. But I'm also trying to just simply focus on filming too. Multitasking at its finest. Okay, so quite a bit of raisins in there. It's not, I'm not going to completely cover it so that you can't even see anything else, but I want to be generous with them too. I did make some cinnamon buns. A part of the last batch I made, I shared with a friend of mine from church, gave him a pan with five in there, and he said he ate them in the first 24 hours. Because I said, remember, these aren't restaurant quality, but he's like, well, they're so good because I ate them in the first 24 hours. So, so he apparently really liked them. And I said, do you want them with, with raisins or without them? And he's like, either or. And I like them with or without too. But some people have a real distaste for raisins. So anyway, in our house, nobody really seems to have a preference one way or the other. Nobody's picked them up that I can tell. So, all right. I will lift the camera up and show you guys what it looks like. Before I roll it up, I'll show you how it looks. Okay, here. This is where we're at so far. Now I just need to roll it all up. Okay, so I'll bring you back once I have them, once I have it rolled, and again, once everything is in the pans rising and stuff. So I'll be back shortly. Okay, so now I've got the dough all rolled up. Just have to go grease a couple pans, slice it up, and then I can set them in the oven to rise. It is like 140 right now, so I gotta that'll be just about a good good enough timing. I'll have to go and let these guys rise. So I'll be right back. Alrighty, so I've got three pans of cinnamon buns all rolled out, ready to go in the oven. Well, they're gonna go in the oven covered in tea towels to rise for 45 minutes to an hour, and then I will bake them for 15 to 20 minutes after. So I will cover them up with tea towels and let them rise, and then I will show you how they look after they've risen. So I'll be back in a little while to show you how they look. Okay, I am back from taking Rachel to work. Well, it's 2.53 now. I took her to work at two o'clock and it's a five minute drive. So I've been back for a while, but I've been trying to clean this kitchen up a little bit. I took one recycling bin of recyclables outside. It was full to overflowing. So I filled the outside recycle bin with that. Well, it's not, that one is not full. There's more room, but I took what was in the, the one that we keep in the kitchen outside and put that in the bin and brought it back in. And I've been working on unloading and reloading the dishwasher. I've got a bunch of the dishes out of the sink over there. I still have some more work to do. Those three guys over here are some leftover rotisserie chicken from Walmart from yesterday. These guys here are clean. They need to be put away. And the oranges need to be put in the fridge. So I still have more work to do. The oven is now preheated, so I'm going to put two of these pans in for about 15 minutes. And then I'll put the other pan in and get these guys baked up. So I'll show you how they look when they all come out of the oven. Okay, I now have all three pans of cinnamon buns out of the oven. This far pan over here was in probably a minute or two longer than I would have liked. It's not burnt, but it's just a little bit darker than the other two pans. But they look really good and they smell good. So it is 3.35 right now. I'm not just too early to start the pork chops in the oven. I am slowly getting this kitchen kind of sort of put back together. The um, pans have to stay on top of the stove top right now while the oven cools because they, they live inside the oven. So I'm not going to bother putting them away just yet anyway because in a little while, probably about an hour, I'll turn the oven back on anyway to preheat it for the pork chops. So i got a few empty jam jars that have to go downstairs. And as you can hear, the birds are in full voice. They are just carrying on. And we have water in our basement because we've had such a ridiculous amount of snow and it's starting to melt. And it's not coming in at a window. It seems to be coming in in a closet downstairs. It always does that when it rains, but it hasn't rained. But we have these ridiculous amounts of snow that are melting. And it's, yeah, I'm trying to keep on top of it by putting towels down down there. But it's coming in pretty steady right now. Just as a trickle, but it's a fast trickle because there's just so much snow. And with it being mild, it's melting and it's just, it's a mess. So that creates more laundry for me because it's more towels to put down and sop it up. And then the faster that happens, the more towels I have to put down. 
and that ends up being more laundry, which ends up running up my hydro bill and my water bill. Anyway, you probably can't even hear me over top of Pepe, my Quaker, so I'm going to stop this segment for right now. I'll show you the uh, pork chops when I put them in the oven and again when I take them out. Okay, these uh, pork chops are now ready to go in the oven. I'm just trying to finish preheating it. Should be ready soon to go in. Um, the first five, the four on this side and the back one, are the sun-dried tomato and oregano marinade. And this one here is the Greek feta and, ore Greek feta and oregano marinade. So I'm going to put these in the oven as soon as, it's as soon as it's preheated. I'm tired. I'm stumbling over my words. It's been a busy day. Um, again, I'll probably set the timer for about 30 minutes and then I'll check on them and I'll show you how they turned out once they come out of the oven. I haven't made anything for a side yet, whether potatoes, vegetables, rice, or otherwise. Um, I'm just going to sit down and take a breather actually at this point. So, because I've been trying to keep up with the towels, the water in the basement. And it's just... Uh, as long as it takes for that stuff to melt, or it's going to be an ongoing thing. So I'm going to take a break. I'm going to get these guys in the oven, and I'll show you how they turned out when they come out of the oven. Okay, I am back for the last time today. Disregard all the crazy bird sounds in the background. I've got an African gray singing like a wild songbird, and a Quaker parrot singing jingle bells in the next room. Anyway, I just pulled the pork chops out of the oven. This is how they turned out. Again, the first five here are the sun-dried tomato and oregano and the Greek fat and oregano. Freak Greek feta and oregano one is right there. So I have had a full day of errands. Well not errands I had. I actually never left the house except to drive Rachel to work. So that's it. But I've already put on it's 627. I've already put on 7170 steps today and that is just here in the house other than driving Rachel to work. So I have had a full day. I'm going to get some rice or something. I'm probably not gonna bother with potatoes at this point because the pork chops are already done. I'll probably just cook up either some mac and cheese or some rice and some vegetables to have on the side and that will be dinner. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, do leave it a do leave a thumbs up and a comment down below. Subscribe if you are new and we'll see you next time. Have a great day everybody. And it's Friday night, so have everybody have a great weekend as well. See you next time.